This video is sponsored by CyberGhost. They said it couldn't be done. They said it was impossible. But after hours of research, some custom code, and a little bit of old fashioned luck, I finally installed iOS on Android. But it doesn't look anything like that. It looks more like this. So getting Apple's operating system on the amazing array of Android hardware is the dream. That would be like the perfect phone if you can merge those two worlds. But that still is very clearly just a fantasy. But until we get to the tech Shangri-La, this is CarPlay running on an Android tablet. And this will run on any Android tablet and you get the full Apple CarPlay experience. All the apps that work with a CarPlay compatible head unit, all the hands freeness that you would get with CarPlay, you are going to get with the setup. Uh, we got this all up and running for less than a hundred bucks. And if you already have an Android tablet, your total is gonna be even less. And this can be done with all the stuff straight from Amazon. We'll link to everything down below. So the key to making all this work is this $50 dongle. Essentially what it does is it tricks your iPhone into thinking it's connected to a CarPlay compatible head unit. And that's it. People have even taken this to like next level 11 by getting it working on Android TVs even. So anything that's running Android, theoretically this will work with. We're not doing a full tutorial. We'll link to steps down below. Because we're using a Fire tablet, I did want the Google Play Store running on it, so I sideloaded that on there. If you're running another Android tablet that already has Google Play, then you can totally just skip this. So getting the dongle working is crazy simple. There's a URL on the box. You go there, download an APK, throw the APK on your tablet, run and install it. You'll have an app and the app is actually still getting updates. So there is a significant amount of developer support behind this. So it's, it's still getting better. Plug in your iPhone and you're off and running. And if plugging in your iPhone seems like too much 2017 for you. Uh, there's a wireless version of the dongle as well. We didn't test that. Supposedly there are some issues with it, but if you wanna go wireless, or at least give it a shot. That'll be down below too. What if this collection of cables, dongles, and side-loaded APKs is, is really a glimpse at the next big Apple product? So if you guys couldn't tell by the name of the channel, I'm a big sports fan and the Lakers network is only offered on two cable providers. And I cut the cable and I still gotta get my sports fix on. So a VPN has become a must have necessity for me to be able to watch games because they are blacked out in my area. So a VPN is an amazing way to go and CyberGhost is a really good option. So it's available for apps on all platforms. You can protect up to seven devices at the same time with just one CyberGhost VPN subscription. There are no bandwidth restrictions, so stream all you want. There's a no log policy too, so whatever you're doing, Find your VPN uh, will be safe and secure. Uh, other cool uses, you can play geo-locked games. Um, and also from security, you're protecting what you're doing on the internet. Even if none of this geo stuff is interesting to you, you're putting another layer of security between yourself and what people can see about you. So if you wanna learn more about CyberGhost or sign up for yourself, we'll link to them down below. Uh, it's a pretty awesome deals going on. They're giving away the first six months for free. And there's also a 45 day money back guarantee. So if you don't like it, you got like about a month and a half to figure it out. So this is cool and it works and it was fun just to try to see if we can make this function properly. But it kind of got me thinking this makes sense as a Siri smart display. It does what my home Google Assistant display does, just, you know, in a CarPlay style form factor. But like clearly CarPlay is, is not the right OS for this theoretical Siri home display. And we've got the iPod and the HomePod and the iPad. So I'm gonna call this theoretical product the HomePad. CarPlay, not gonna work on a HomePad. 
I use in my kitchen, I've got a Lenovo smart display. I love it, my wife and I use it all the time. We have it read us news, weather, have the kids play music on it. We use it for recipes, videos. I mean, we really use it for a lot of different things. And I like that it has a display for a few reasons. Uh, if we're cooking, we have multiple timers set. You can see both timers there. Um, you can go ahead and let it play videos. And I can do all this with just my voice. And beyond that, I get visual cues too, or something visual associated with it, like the camera feed. That's something that I wanna see. So here's what I would want my home pad to do. Obviously, FaceTime calls would be a giant one. Being able to use it as a smart picture display, have it pull down pictures from the iCloud photo library would be awesome to have. Things like uh, HomeKit control, Siri shortcut support, AirPlay support. It can do all the things that the other smart displays can just inside of the Apple ecosystem. So I know what I'm saying is no different than Google's strategy or what Amazon's got going with their devices. The way Apple's traditionally done things is very rarely like first to market. Generally they'll wait, they'll sit back, they'll check out what the competition's doing, and then they'll enter with their version. So if you're following Apple's history, this does make sense for them to sort of see what Google, Amazon have done, learn from those mistakes and their successes, and then eventually enter the market. To talk about Apple entering products late, there were rumors years ago about Apple working on their own television set, not an Apple TV box, but their own like physical set. And maybe that was going to be their version of Siri in the house. And if you look at it from that perspective, they could have been the first in the market to bring this sort of smart assistant into the home. And that could have set the expectations for what a smart assistant can do. Obviously that didn't come out and we never saw it. And certainly you can use Siri to talk to your Apple TV box, but I don't think that the future is going to be talking to your third party box connected to your TV. If you're in your kitchen, you're not always staring at your television or maybe your TV is in another room. So Apple, while they could have been first, it's clearly very, very late. So like the HomePad thing, I think it sounds kind of cool in the same way that like the HomePod sounded cool, but the market is so mature. Like has Apple waited too long to even enter this? You look at like the Echo line of products there. They're low cost, various screen sizes. The Alexa skills make it amazing. Ton of third party products to work with it. It's just a really good, full functioned ecosystem that also can you know answer questions for you. Then on the Google side, you've got almost the same thing. Different screen sizes now. You've got amazing speaker options. For the most part, a little higher cost. Access to Google Assistant. It can do a lot of really cool things. And as I'm running down the list of all the things that this you know, HomePad might be able to do, it's just Apple's version of the same stuff, but probably more closed off. One thing it would absolutely have to have to compete with Google and Amazon, is Siri's just straight up gotta be better. And Apple was one of the first to introduce the smart assistant and it hasn't gotten that much better. Now it has certainly improved, but hasn't improved at the rate that Amazon and Google have. And maybe that's the reason Apple hasn't released this HomePad. It would put Siri front and center. And if that experience, that voice assistant isn't good, or at least not as good as people are used to, the product's gonna fall flat on their face. By all accounts, the HomePod has not been a raging success for Apple. And even right now, it's finally getting things that the other systems have had for years. Being able to recognize multiple voices is a huge one. And perhaps when Siri gets to a point of parody with let's say Google Assistant, I could see this HomePad being much more useful. But if all you're using it for is setting timers, maybe getting news or checking the weather or playing some videos, it's hard for me to see any compelling reason to pay what I imagine is going to be a pretty steep premium to get the Apple version what Google and Amazon already have. So I think in order for the HomePad to be successful, it needs to embrace openness in the way that sort of the HomePod never did. Being able to pick your music streaming services would be huge. Perhaps being able to play nicely with other smart home services that aren't HomeKit supported. That would be sort of a huge driving success to make this HomePad something that people would want to buy give them a reason to buy it over what Google and Amazon are already offering. And for those reasons, I thought what I would need for this to be successful 
Openness is not something that is in Apple's DNA right now. So because of all of those reasons and what I think this HomePad would need, and I imagine some version of this exists in Cupertino somewhere, I don't think we're ever going to see some version of this smart display that's powered by Siri. And I would love to be proven wrong and see a dawning of a new age for, for Apple, but I don't think I am.